on this episode of A Reader Cast coronavirus's impact on aviation and what is next for pilots. Welcome aviators to another episode of Aviator Cast. Load up your flight bag with useful flight training topics, interviews and aviation fashion. Let's kick the tires and light the fires. Coming to you from Angle of Attack headquarters in Homer, Alaska. Here's your host and flight instructor, Chris Palmer. All right, welcome aviators. Hope you are well, no matter where you're at. Um, I am in our studio here in California where we've been staying with family for a little while. Expected things to turn out a little bit differently than they have with some great plans that were coming up like sun and fun and some travel and extra content to show you guys. I usually go to Florida each year. I was gonna go to Texas this year and fly with my friend Josh Flowers, but of course, we're all changing plans right now. The world is in chaos in a lot of ways, and we're all trying to pull together to um, to make things work and to get through this. You know, I've told uh, many of my family and friends that this feels like I'm in an alternate reality. It feels like I'm living inside of a movie. It's been hard to grasp reality because of that, uh, except that these things are happening, that they are real and that they should be taken very seriously and that we all have a part to uh, play in that. So I am going to use this opportunity to just share a little bit of education on COVID-19 and the coronavirus. You know, I, I've gotten into some pretty deep um, personal study on this to learn what the impact was, mainly because I am in California, it's this hot area right now. We seem to have a pretty good situation but we're wondering if we should go to Alaska where we'll be better off, I think, in a lot of ways. And so I've been trying to weigh the safety of my family um, in all of this. And, uh, and it's been a very difficult road to navigate because of that. And, uh, and it seems like we're coming up with some plans to mitigate risk and all of that. So in today's podcast, I want to talk about how the risk of COVID-19 is a lot like aviation safety I've thought about this quite a bit over the last several days and have some thoughts on that. I think that'll kind of be the wrapping of this entire episode. Um, a brief overview of where things stand currently with the virus, uh, where things may be going, particularly with aviation, and uh, and what we should be doing immediately in aviation to um, to tackle this. And then our role, you know, what you and I can do today um, to to move forward. So as you're watching, as you're listening, please comment, join the conversation. This is available on YouTube, although AviatorCast is primarily a podcast. Uh, I've been doing all this on video as well, so you can find it on YouTube. Subscribe, like, and share. That's how the news gets out of, um, of AviatorCast. I'm trying to put a lot of effort into these videos so that I hope you guys um, always get great stuff each week. I'm always releasing a lot of material and, and really trying to incrementally get the quality up as well. So anyway, it's up to you guys, just like we're about to talk about in other um, and not so fun aspects, but it's up to you guys to help uh, spread the word of AviatorCast, Angle of Attack, and what that looks like. So how is the risk of COVID-19 or coronavirus a lot like aviation safety? So here's the thing. I've been thinking a lot about how as a professional pilot, as a flight instructor, I... I really evaluate the safety of my flights through every aspect of that flight, right? From the pre-flight to getting to the airplane and pre-flighting the airplane, um, all the checks I have to do through the taxi run-up, uh, takeoff, every, every single phase of flight, I am constantly evaluating my risk or doing a risk assessment of where I'm at. And if things come up that are are of a danger or I see that they can turn into a danger, I'm trying to look far further down the road to find out, hey, where is this domino effect taking me if I continue to make bad decisions or, or I make a series of not so good decisions that leads to a bad decision that leads to some sort of accident. Um, and, and as pilots, we really, really work hard or should get to the point where we're working hard in in always having the, the best outcome we possibly can because of that. So whatever we can control is usually the best answer, and that is often uh, stopping the flight, um, diverting and landing if you're in flight, 
not even going on the flight if something is wrong with the airplane, um, not even going out and pre-flighting if you find that the pre-flight information, your, your, your uh, flight planning doesn't quite match up and you're not comfortable with the flight that day. So on and on, we're, we're constantly seeking that controlled outcome when it comes to flying. And, uh, and that's where the term aeronautical decision making comes into play because really for you as a pilot, at the end of the day, it's up to you to make that ultimate safe decision that is going to, um, to guarantee the outcome of your flight, okay? So I always tell people my golden rule for flying, for aviation safety, is I'm going to return home to my family every single time. And I'm going to use the whatever outcomes I need to, um, to, to present, to work toward, I'm going to work toward those and guarantee myself those, um, and, and that's what I shoot for. Rather than taking little risks or taking bigger risks and just getting to a place where there could be uh, there could be issues. Now, all of that said, I would be dishonest if I said that flying itself wasn't without risk. Okay, it is. We have plenty of risks. There are times during the flight where we are very vulnerable, like right after takeoff, for example. You know, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of thoughts out there recently on the impossible turn. I still think it's an impossible turn and should be thought of that way. Um, we could be over terrain that is not acceptable for landing, and there are just parts where even if we're a safe pilot, there is risk to to flying an airplane. That's just the way it is. You can't completely get rid of the risk. You can only mitigate that risk, control what you can control. Um, especially with things that you you uh, you know where you can make the decisions definitively, and then constantly thinking about that decision making as part of your overall flying. Now, why would I bring all this up with coronavirus and and COVID nineteen? Well, it's because this is a, a very good example of the current situation we're in. We have some real um, credible threats to us as just healthy members of society. So. So there are young people getting sick as well from this. Um, of course, older people are having a very hard time. That's just what the data shows. I mean, th there's really not a dispute on a lot of this, although they are constantly learning more. You know, I saw an article earlier about a 34 year old that had died in California just, uh, just yesterday from coronavirus. So of course, a lot of these stories are gonna be coming out. And, and as, I, I wanna say this lightly, but as Americans, we have great pride in our strength um, and, and what we're able to, to invent and achieve and the safety in which we have and the society that we have. And to a certain extent, I think that we all feel fairly invulnerable to a lot of the world because of that. Um, we, we often are outside of, of the world reality and, and how hard things can really be. And the reason I say that is because this virus doesn't discriminate. It will, it, it will and has shown to, um, to spread very rapidly and, and cause a lot of issues. So the reason I bring up aviation safety is because this entire conversation um, that we're about to have kind of surrounds that. So I'm going to get into quickly, and I really want to go through this. I hope that you've done the research on coronavirus. You're out there learning about it, but I do feel a moral obligation to at least share a little bit for those of you that, you know, this may be one of the few things that you see. Um, just as a precursor, I don't want to, I don't want to constantly be beating this over your heads with the content that's going to be coming out over the next uh, several weeks or months, however long we have to deal with this. This is a transformative event in our society. That's, that's a foregone conclusion. But I also think that we need to um, uh, maintain a sense of normalcy as well and, uh, and move on in a positive way while still remaining safe right now. So I, I just want to share, again, this isn't going to be something I bring up all the time or even very frequently, but I want to share um, where things stand right now with the coronavirus. This is kind of outside of aviation, and then we'll talk about the impact it has on aviation. First and foremost, I've already said this is very real. It is impactful. It is. It, it can and probably will get to your own family. There's likelihood that um, someone you know will get sick. There's even likelihood that someone you know will die from this. It is that serious. 
we are just at the very beginning of this process. And, uh, and if you look at Italy as a benchmark, even outside of China and South Korea and some other locations that had a much more different reaction from a governmental perspective, then you'll see that Italy is actually, you know, the, the freest country that's getting hit the hardest. And we have the most to learn from them and other European countries in terms of um, where the United States is headed. So uh, it, it is not going very well in Italy at all. Um, they are on lockdown the entire country, meaning shelter in place. They will allow people to go out for groceries and, uh, and seek other very only essential things all restaurants are closed, for example. So um, that could be the way it's going in the United States. Time will tell because we may have had a little bit of a head start on, on the social distancing, which you're going to hear about. But that is all dependent upon participation. And I know that for me, I've been doing that, but I've seen plenty of people around town just kind of doing the same old thing. And, and this virus will spread because of that. So... Um, as a pilot, you're obviously looking at every single action that you take as, as you operate an airplane, as you conduct a flight. And so as we are going through this process, every action that we take, every single decision we make, there is a risk involved in that. You know, I, I filled up with gas the other night. I'm trying to keep my gas tank topped off um, just in case something happens. Of course, we're not moving around right now at all. But when I went and did it, I didn't have any hand sanitizer with me. I had nothing and I had to touch the screen, you know, I had to figure out how to do that. So even something like that makes me uncomfortable. I think about um, this local restaurant that we like here that is doing delivery now. They've never done delivery before. They're trying to still provide a service, which I think obviously food and, and things like that are very important to keep open. And we ordered food from there, but who knows if someone at that restaurant has it? Who knows if someone comes in that has it and doesn't know they have it? They pass it on to our food bags, and then we eat our food, and then we pass it on to our family, and eventually gets to the vulnerable people in our family. Every little step we take is a risk, and we need to be thinking about everything right now and, uh, and mitigating that. You know, the, the surefire thing, kind of like diverting an airplane, would be to essentially lock yourselves in, have a way to get um, uh, essential supplies. A lot of people are having things shipped right now and take care of yourselves and your family that way. That is the extreme end of it to self um, to self shelter in place right away and then kind of wait this thing out. But um, we'll kind of see how that will play out. Here over the next few weeks, I think even after another week, we're going to have quite a bit more information about what is going on. Now, the US government is, is very different. We have, um, we have a system of government where we have to get a lot of approvals for spending. We can't just at the stroke of a pen decide that we're going to spend a bunch of money and mobilize a bunch of resources. That's more of an authoritarian type of government. And so here we're even talking about getting congressional approval for certain types of spending to really get after what is going on now. Now, um, I've one of my main sources are the, the White House press briefings, and it seems that they are doing all they can to make sure that there is mass testing available in the, in the millions of kits in, over the next few weeks, which is really getting ahead of where we were by mobilizing private industry, defense industry, um, and so on and so forth. So everyone kind of coming together there. Of course, they're very concerned about the amount of beds that are going to be available and the ventilators that will be available because this does attack their respiratory system so heavily. So that they they are mobilizing a bunch of those beds as well. They're even getting um, they're getting Navy hospital ships that they're going to put on either coast. They they are talking to Carnival Cruise Lines about using their ships if needed. Um, if we don't practice the the stuff that they're asking us to practice, community spread will happen. It is happening already. It's just a matter of if we participate in it or not. Community spread will happen, and if we aren't careful, it could overwhelm our medical system. Now, as it stands now, the way it's trending, it will already uh, put our medical system to the brink. And so a bunch of manufacturing is happening behind the scenes. Of course, everything health-wise is, is first and foremost the most important. That's what I've been trying to figure out for my family. 
but from an economical perspective, obviously everything is shut down and, and major, major, major impact for the airline industry. Um, and, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later from my limited perspective, but where I see it from a flight training perspective. And that's kind of where we're at. Now, over the next week, we're going to see a dramatic increase in the confirmed cases in the US as testing comes on board. A lot of the labs that would test things like this, they only test several, they can only test several things a day. There aren't industrial level, you know, thousands of units um, uh, testing centers that they have because there's just nothing like this is, that has happened before. And a pandemic on this scale has never truly happened um, in the modern age. Now there was the, the flu of 1918, which was a, you know, a long time ago and, and life was much different there then. So, you know, we're mobilizing everything we can to fight this. And a lot of those tests are going to be coming on board over the next few days. You're going to see the, the numbers dramatically increase because of that. The backlog of, of testing samples that they already have are going to start getting to the system and we'll get a more realistic number about the, the mortality rate and where we're at. Now, there are plenty of cases that will never be confirmed. Um, I have a cousin that is almost positive that he has this. Uh, I don't doubt it. And he can't get tested. They're not allowing him to get tested because he's young and he's not, he doesn't have pre-existing conditions and they think he'll make it through. So there's going to be a lot more of that than there are the people that need to be admitted to the hospital. But it's really not about the testing at the end of the day. Um, it's nice to be able to test and get the correct numbers and it is important for the government and, and everyone to have a, a good handle on what the actual numbers are. But what we're looking at is is mitigating the spread of this because regardless we can do all the testing we want but if we don't have a way to stop the spread then we're we're in big trouble now there's not a way to combat it and so really the only way to combat it is through uh, social distancing and some of those measures that we've already been seeing isolating means you're healthy and you're you're essentially cutting off all communication, not communication, but cutting off all human contact. Um, quarantine is where you are sick and you're deciding to stay uh, quarantined uh, or compromised. You think you may have been in an area where, where it was spreading and, uh, and that's what we're looking at. There's a, a good document that is um, kind of the current government initiative right now. It's the 15 days to slow the spread. You can find it on whitehouse.gov and other locations. They created this in partnership with the CDC and many other professionals. Notice it said to slow the spread and not stop. This isn't gonna be stopped immediately unless they find some sort of medication. There are some things they're talking about, but I'm careful to, uh, to bring up anything that isn't a sure thing yet. So obviously there are a lot of professionals working behind the scenes to find something that can help out. But 15 days to slow the spread all of us participating in social distancing, working from home, um, taking an impact now so that we don't have the impact later. Uh, if we don't practice those things, especially as young people, then we are only going to help transmit it to a population that can't handle it as well. So, you know, I'm just, uh, I'm just really cautious about doing that and I've been really careful not to go out you know, I, I wanted a Twix bar yesterday and it would have been so easy to go to the gas station and just grab one. Um, I, you know, just a handful of things where I'm like, you know, actually I can't do that now because I need to just stay home. And yes, I can be in my car, I can drive around, I can go for a walk, I can get some sunshine. I think you can stay, keep plenty of distance doing things like that, but um, it's, uh, it's something that we need to think about. So um, let's talk about where this is going in aviation and um, actually not so much aviation, but I'm just going to breeze through this part because I think we've kind of covered this ad nauseum, but this will eventually end. We'll get to a point where, you know, a lot of people will have recovered from this or had it and, and not been affected or just never even got in contact with it and we'll get to a point where it tapers off. We don't know what the full scope is long term about whether it'll come back or not, or this is a one time thing. Many people will get sick and um, 
and many people will die, but it is based off of our personal actions and participation in that social distancing, isolating, etc. There will be some serious economic impact um, directly related to the amount of time it takes for all of this to calm down. Now we have this 15 days to slow the spread. I think we're um, 12 days now counting down to slow the spread. I think we're ahead of it a little bit just based on my research, but it all depends on people's participation. Uh, plenty of people in South Beach, Miami right now on spring break just living it up and not obeying any of these rules and guaranteed that's going to have a major impact. You'll see that in the data eventually that those, those decisions will have a major, major impact. Um, there may be, um, and it's likely that there will be stricter guidelines eventually put in place that all Americans will need to shelter in place. That's the way that Italy has gone. That's a lot a way a lot of nations have gone in this process. Um, and we'll just need to kind of watch and see what happens there. Aviation won't be the same for a while. Um, this is a major, major blow to the, aviation, to the aviation industry as a whole because not only does it affect the airlines who have stopped all flights, but it, it affects anyone who is thinking of becoming a pilot, anyone in flight training. Uh, it, it will take a while to recover. I think also, I haven't even heard this, but I think there will be an apprehension to travel for a while and that's going to reduce demand. I just think that people will have um, a bit of fear of flying, a little bit like they had after 9-11, that they could contract something like this, especially traveling internationally. That could be a very interesting process that plays out. There's a good chance that cargo carriers could actually, in the opposite direction, exponentially grow through this process because so many more of us will, uh, will want our goods delivered directly to our home. So we could see a, a greater demand in things like home food delivery service, which we will, of course, in the short term, but it could change societal, um, societal perspective in the long term to wanting that sort of service and, and, and growing that way, which on the cargo end of aviation could actually be good news. Time will tell, but Amazon is overwhelmed right now with orders. They are, uh, they are hiring 100,000 people within as fast as they can. So if you're out of work and looking for work, that's a possibility. And, uh, and we'll just kind of see how that goes. But it, it's interesting that there's kind of this ebb and flow of areas where, um, where things will change. And that's specifically directed to aviation. There will be government assistance to help all Americans, small businesses. Um, it seems like the government is finally coming together in a bipartisan way and they're figuring out how they can uh, have some stopgap measures here to help everyone out. I think that's smart. I'm typically a conservative-minded person, but I think this is an unprecedented situation, and, uh, and I am so far in support of what is happening and, uh, and have just a, just a tiny bit of confidence, but also a lot of ca caution, but a tiny bit of confidence that even as a small business owner, I'll have options to keep my business open and keep moving forward. So what can you be doing? Because eventually this all comes down to you. Um, obviously, it all comes down to your personal actions. There's, there's a lot you can do to help just the, the, your fellow man right now to abide by the rules, to take this very seriously, to slow down, and, and that's kind of where we're at. There are so many unknowns. We really don't know where it's going, and I've been struggling with this personally. Um, I, I feel like we have a little bit of a better family plan now on where, where we're going and what's gonna happen for us, what we can control. But um, there are a lot of unknowns. You know, those of you that are looking toward careers in aviation, um, we'll talk about that here in a second. Um, you know, it, it, take a little bit of pause right now and, and uh, in one way or another and just think about where things are headed and keep a close tab on this. But I do have, I do have some confidence that we're gonna bounce back from this that it will end eventually and, and we'll get to where we need to go. So my thoughts are, you know, what can we do to, to make some positive outcomes on this? Um, you, you're gonna be locked indoors. You're gonna be slowing down. You're gonna be able to step away from your work for a little bit. A lot of you are in a position to do that. And, uh, and 
you know, one of those big things with flight training is that there's not enough time. And so this is actually an opportunity for those of you that are out there thinking of this aviation thing. You're not so concerned about the career aspects. In other words, the flow of money for you. And maybe you want to start this. Um, I think it might be a fantastic time for people to, to self-study more while they're indoors. Make a positive, uh, a positive impact on your own aviation journey while you can, while you have the time to study while we're going through this to move forward. So in other words, what I'm saying just very clearly is that you know maybe you, you enroll in ground school and you, uh, you start to tackle that while you're waiting around for what's gonna happen and start to have a, a positive flow in the right direction. I also think a lot of people are going to be reflecting on their lives during this process because it, it brings to bear for anyone who's going through it um, what they've been doing with their lives, if that's been worth it, if they've just been in the rat race, what they want to do that will make them happy. Uh, and, and I think there are a lot of positive things that can come out of being home with your family more and, and having those personal interactions and, uh, and really reflecting on your own personal ambitions and everything. So maybe there are some of you out there that will reflect on this process and have some time to, to slow down and think about um, what you've been doing with your life and maybe you decide that you're finally actually going to go for the aviation dream and you're not going to avoid it too long because life is short. And this kind of brings that to bear that life is short and, uh, and maybe it's time to go for it. I'm not necessarily advocating that, but I'm just saying that there are some, some, uh, some great things that could come from this in your own personal reflection and aviation isn't going anywhere. It's going to come back and, uh, and this could be an opportunity to start to work on that. So to prepare and study right now would be a, a fantastic thing to do if you do go through that process or if you are already in that process to move forward in a positive way but I would avoid the bigger decisions for a while. So I would avoid taking on a lot of debt, um, especially committing to like one of these big schools where you'll get one big lump sum loan and start to work on, on your flight training. Um, bigger aviation universities where you have large, um, you have to put in a, 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 an exorbitant amount of money above and beyond what you'd usually spend on aviation to do it. I, I think that there's still plenty of opportunity and, and low risk for people to go out there and pay hour for hour without getting a loan. But if you're thinking of getting a gigantic loan and committing yourself in your financial future to aviation, this is a moment to pause on that stuff a little bit and just be a little bit prudent and careful. All right. So, what is our role in this together? So here at Angle of Attack, I've thought a lot about this. You know, I'm going to obviously be uh, more slowed down myself. Um, in Alaska, I'd have a better opportunity to do that, and we'll see if it pans out, if I can get back up there with my family. That's kind of the plan right now to execute something like that. Um, so I'm going to keep producing content for you to absorb while you're you're slowing down, while you're indoors, keep a sane mind. Again, I don't wanna beat you over the head with this coronavirus stuff. There's plenty of it out there. Everyone's talking about it. I want this to be a place where you can come for some great content and, uh, and, and learn and move forward and be inspired. I'm really interested in doing that. I do believe, again, that we will get back to normal. It might be several months, it might be a year or so. Could be more, could be less. We don't really know right now. We we have to just kind of sit tight and play by the rules, and uh, and see where it goes, and then we'll reevaluate from there. So um, it's just an interesting opportunity to to be at home and really focus on our aviation goals, and I, I think this is a creative way to make lemonade out of lemons. And, and, uh, and all of us together, you know, me producing the content, you being part of that content and learning, um, all of us together moving forward in a positive way and hoping the best for the future while we're also taking care of ourselves, our families, and our fellow man by, uh, by playing by some of these rules that the health experts are asking us to do. So that's where I see it heading. And I, I'm going to uh, be thinking of new and creative ways to do content. I'm going to be uh, introducing some new types of content, I believe, and and doing more podcasts, of course. That's kind of a mainstay that I have to keep going with. And overall, I'm just really 
Uh, grateful to be in a position I'm in to be able to do that. This is what I already do anyway. I work from home in a lot of ways already anyway. So I hope to pass those benefits on to you. And I, man, if there's anything I can do for you, please just reach out, let me know what I can do to help. If you have any uh, advice that you need to be given, um, I'm here to hear you. You can, one of the best ways to do that is direct messages on Instagram. I'm always active on there. Uh, I, I get most of what people send me through Facebook Messenger, but sometimes I don't. So Instagram direct messages are one of the best ways. So as you're going through this trying time, I my heart goes out to those of you that are impacted economically. Um, I, I really hope that you um, can get through this and that you can get some help to get through this and uh, and wish you all the best there. I wish you health first and foremost. For those of you that are worried about the health of this, most of us are going to be fine, but um, I want you to stay careful and, and be and, and protect yourself if you feel like you are vulnerable, okay? Please heed the warnings of your local and state and federal governments. Um, and, and I think that if we do so, the, the professionals that are looking at the da data that have committed their lives to this type of learning in the medical field can assist us. And, uh, and I encourage you to make positive plans for the future. Try not to just live this day to day, but do something that gives you encouragement and hope. And I think moving forward in aviation, whether or not um, it, it, like in your own personal home study, whether or not you eventually get to get a license or not, it may just be a great way to keep you sane. I always say something at the end of every podcast, at the end of almost everything I do, I say throttle on. I came up with throttle on many years ago as an encouraging phrase. It may just sound like a cute little aviation phrase, all right, but really throttle on it would be correct more of a throttle up if you were saying it correctly, right? But throttle on means that I want you to have power. I want you to keep moving forward, moving on, and, and pushing through this process, okay? Throttle on me actually means quite a bit to me. Um, it is my, my catchphrase, but it does mean a lot. And I wish you the best, and I wish you a, a healthy and prosperous throttle on. All right. So that's it for this episode. You can uh, you can uh, like the podcast if you want. You can subscribe uh, on YouTube. It's very helpful if you help in those metrics with sharing and liking and subscribing because that is how YouTube pumps my content up through the roof. It's all dependent on you. And of course, podcasts were available anywhere you want to podcast. Aviatorcast.com is where you can see a lot of that information. That's where it goes on the blog. Um, if you do need ground school and you're looking to get into this study that I recommended, we do have private and instrument ground school ready right now. You can sign up today. It's video-based classes, and, uh, and you can start to study from home right now, which will be something positive to move forward with. I also have Checkride Ace, which is a checkride preparation course for those of you getting ready for that for private instrument commercial. And that'll help you pass your checkride with flying colors. Looking forward to that day soon where we can continue um, continue checkrides. I'm sure some areas, lots of areas are still doing it, but um, everyone's impacted by this right now. So I hope you can find a, a positive way to do that. All right, thanks so much for being here. Again, I, I wish you all health and wellness and and prosperity and uh and i'm in this with you as well so let's get through it together let's keep talking let's keep working through it and i'll see you next time until then throttle on we sincerely thank you for joining us on aviator cast please subscribe through your favorite podcast service and leave a review check out more flight training resources at angleofattack.com there you can find this podcast, many free aviation training videos, as well as online ground school for private instrument, commercial, and CFI. Got a check ride coming up? Check Ride Ace from Angle of Attack is your ultimate companion, guiding you through the process so you can conquer your big day. Thanks once again for joining us on AviatorCast. Turn left, contact Ground Point Niner.